Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to be looking at radar plotting and I'm going to show you how to complete an alteration of course by doing a radar plot. So the first thing we've got to do is set up our starting conditions. We've got the radar plan here and we're going to say it's a 12 minute plot and a 6 mile range. It means from the centre to the outer edge it's going to be 6 miles. We can complete the scale bar down in the bottom and I'm just going to leave it up throughout the video just for reference. With that we can input our own data. Our own vessel is going to be heading due north 000 degrees at 10 knots. I've chosen these just to make the numbers easier. We can put our own true vector on which is going to start in the centre and be pointing at 000 and the length of that is going to be 2 miles which is how far we would have travelled in 12 minutes. Once we've got all that information, we can begin to plot. When we receive the first echo, we can't really tell much. All we've got is a range and bearing. We need to wait for more information. Six minutes later, which is half our time period, we can complete the second plot. Again, we haven't really got much to go on. We've still got quite scanty information. We can't make any alterations at this stage. Six minutes after the second plot, or 12 minutes after the original one, we've got our third echo. Now that we've got three echoes, we have enough information to complete the plot. The first part of this video is just going to be completing the plot. I did this in a previous video, which I'll link up the top. I'd advise going back to watch that because I'm going to be covering it quite quickly in this video so that we can get to the course alteration part. The first thing we want to do is put on the relative line of approach. This is simply the line between the dots and it shows the path that the dots are taking so we can see how close it will get to our own vessel. We can measure the range from the centre of the ring to that line of approach, and that will give us our closest point of approach. Now that point isn't going to be due north or due east, it's actually just going to be perpendicular to that relative line of approach. From that we can simply measure the range that the ring is drawn. In our case we can see it's about 0.7 miles, so our closest point of approach is 0.7 miles. The next thing we need to complete is the time to the closest point of approach. I've overlaid the range bar here because we need to measure the distance that the dots have travelled in 12 minutes. We can see they've travelled this distance which is about 1.9 miles and we know they've done that in 12 minutes. We can then compare that to the distance they've got to go to work out how much longer it's going to take to reach that closest point of approach. We can see they've got about 3.1 miles to go and we want to know how long that's going to take. We can use a ratio here because these are all just linked to each other and we can say 1.9 over 3.1 equals 12 over the time to the closest point of approach and shifting around with a bit of algebra we get the TCPA is 19.6 minutes. With the CPA and TCPA established we've then got to continue completing the plot to work out the target vessel's course and speed. You remember before we used the OWA diagram, we're going to use the same thing again. Position O is the original position of the target vessel when we first received a return. A is the actual position, this is where the vessel actually is at the time of completing the plot, so it's simply their most recent plot. From these we can work out point W, and W if you remember is the point at which we draw our vectors from. We know the W to O position is the way of our own vessel. So we can overlay our own vector pointing towards the O and the other end of it becomes the point W. With point W we can then join the points W and A together to find the way of another. And this is going to be the target vessel's course and speed. Now to find course is quite easy, we just transpose the target vessel's vector to the centre and we can read straight off the ring round the edge and see that their own course is 321 degrees. To find their speed, again this is quite simple, we can just measure the distance of the other vector and we can see that it's about 2.9 miles and we know they've travelled that distance in 12 minutes. So with that 12 minutes being one fifth of an hour, we multiply by 5 to get how far they would travel in an hour which is their speed, which is nautical miles an hour, 14.5 knots. The next thing we need is aspect, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay their vector on their actual position. This turns our plotting sheet 
into a relative motion true vector plot. To find the aspect we want to know the bearing we are from the target vessel so we draw a line joining the two and we can see that we are bearing 265 from them and then we want to compare that to their heading. We know their heading was 321 degrees so the difference between 321 and 265 is 56 degrees. We know we are on their port side so the aspect is going to be red 56 degrees. The final piece of information is just the bearing at the closest point of approach. We already worked that out at the beginning and we've said that was 010 degrees. With that we've completed the plot. I'm just going to rearrange this slightly to give us a bit more space to work with for the course alteration that we're about to complete. I'm going to say that we want to alter course to 060. We're not happy with the CPA that we've got, it's only 0.7 miles and we know we need to alter to starboard because this is a crossing situation, the other vessel is on our starboard side, we are the giveaway vessel, we need to make a bold alteration of course to starboard. I want to know what my CPA is going to be after I alter course to 060. Let's take a look at this to start with. Which of the pieces of information is actually going to change? The CPA is, the TCPA is, but the target vessel's course and speed is not going to change. The aspect of course will change, that's changing all the time because the CPA is not zero. And the CPA bearing, well that is also going to change. Let's just dim out the bits that are going to change. We can see the only thing that will remain the same is the WA vector which contains the information of the target vessel's course and speed. We can put on our new vector. Our new vector is going to be the same length, we're still travelling at 10 knots, but it's now going to be pointing towards 060. That's going to be our new course. We can start to build up the rest of the diagram now. Because we know that the WA vector is not changing, we can overlay our own vector onto this, so we can find the new W to O prime. We can't call it WO anymore because it's not the original position. It's O prime, it's now an imaginary position. And we can use this to work out the new relative line of approach. The relative line of approach, of course, is just going to be O prime to A and then we continue that line forwards. You must note that we've assumed the course alteration is instantaneous at point A. If we'd have needed to wait maybe a minute, we'd have needed to continue our plot on for another minute before undertaking this course alteration. Now that we've got our relative line of approach, we can put on the ring to work out our new closest point of approach and the new bearing to the closest point of approach. We also need to know the new TCPA. We need to measure the new imaginary distance O prime to A and we know that the plot length is still 12 minutes. We know that the other vessel's imaginary plot here has travelled 3.8 miles in 12 minutes. We can use that to work out how long it's going to take to travel down that relative line of approach to reach our CPA. We just need to move our scale up and measure the distance here, which we can see is going to be 3 miles. So we know that the imaginary thing to begin with is 3.8 and they've done that in 12 minutes and they've still got to travel another 3 miles and we want to know how long that's going to take. Again we can do a simple division here, 3.8 over 3 equals 12 over the TCPA. And rearranging with a bit of algebra we find out that TCPA is now going to be 9.5 minutes after our course alteration. Then all we want to do is measure the range, the radius of our ring to work out the new closest point of approach. Overlaying our scale bar again we see the CPA is now going to be 1.2 miles. From all this we can see after our course alteration the new TCPA is going to be 9.5 minutes time and the CPA is going to be 1.2 miles. We've increased our CPA but reduce the time to the closest point of approach, so we're going to be out of the situation a lot quicker. Of course, for any course alteration, all you need to do is adjust the angle that you want to go, place that from the original W position to find the new O prime position, join O prime to A and continue that line through to find the new relative line of approach, to find the new closest point of approach. You need to assume that the other vessel's course and speed will not be changing. 
And that brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully you found the information useful and you've learnt how to do a course alteration on a manual radar plot. If you have, a thumbs up is always appreciated. If you've got any questions or comments, just leave them below. And to stay up to date with all videos that I publish, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.